So let me therefore show the board now. Uh, the starting point would be an ordinary differential equation and then the the main point would be that we will distinguish them into regular differential equation and uh, singular differential equation and here the primary point in the, the differential equation is that we were we are going to emphasize some points on singular differential equations and we are going to uh, put some emphasis on uh, differential equations of special type that we will be dealing with the power series method of finding the solution and once again, Frobenius method is also a power series method, but it is uh, applicable only for the singular differential equation. Uh, once you uh, get an idea about the, the ordinary differential equation, our primary interest next immediately would be that we will move on to the partial differential equations. Maybe I'll, I have to move down and show that. Yeah. So our primary interest in the partial differential equation is that we will be dealing with Laplace equation. Laplace equation means automatically Poisson equation also and then the heat equation and wave equation. Some of the equations that are going to appear in classical mechanics or classical electrodynamics or in quantum mechanics. Any of the topics in physics for example when you are going to deal with uh, these kinds of equation will appear and why do you want to learn only these three equations. They, there may be many equations what happened to them. So when that question comes the answer should be clear to you that we need we, we need the solution methodology as and when you move on to appropriate topic in electrodynamics or in quantum mechanics or waves and oscillation similar courses okay so once we are going to study the partial differential equation there is an important point to be noted that we are going to study the solution to this differential equation in three different coordinate systems that means cartesian three dimensional cartesian three dimensional cylindrical polar and three dimensional spherical polar coordinate systems. So, which means that you'll have to repeat the solution in three of them Laplace equation, three coordinate systems, heat equation, three coordinate systems, wave equation, three coordinate systems. So, this itself will give you nine, nine combinations are there, and each one of them is fairly lengthy. Okay, fine. With that introduction, uh, once we uh, once we are st uh, studying the uh, partial differential equation something arises naturally that's what I'm trying to show so let me move down here so what happens is that the moment you start learning the partial differential equations especially the especially the Laplace equation in the three coordinate systems then certain special differential equation arises naturally these differential equations uh, they are categorized under the name of sturm liouville theory because uh, they have some interesting property what is known as a sulfur joint operator so where from the the equations like legendary differential equation comes how, where from i get the bessel differential equation the answer is they are coming from the laplace equation in the respective coordinate system each one is connected so the laplace equation in the spherical polar coordinate system is directly connected to the legendary differential equation and whenever you are going to study in cylindrical symmetry, then Bessel differential equation will naturally arise. Naturally arise means the equation will appear when you try to solve the Laplace equation in cylindrical coordinate system. So cylindrical coordinate system means always Bessel differential equation will come. Spherical polar coordinate system means legendary differential equation will naturally come. So that is the reason and hermetic differential equation is a differential equation that naturally arises in the case of the quantum harmonic oscillator. In the case of the classical harmonic oscillator of course you have the second order ordinary differential equation. So that is not a special differential equation. So what is hermetic differential equation? It is coming under special. What is special is it comes under the heading of sturm liouville theory. That is what is known as the special and this differential equation comes when you are trying to understand quantum harmonic oscillator. And similarly, the Legory differential equation appears in an appropriate place when you are going to uh, study some physical properties or a physical system. And so that's all about the special differential equation. Then I have written something called special function here. Now, what is a special function is these are the solution to the differential equation. I have legendary differential equation, right? What is the solution? The answer is it is a special function. I have a Bessel differential equation. What is the solution? That solution is known as Bessel function. Bessel function is a special function. Hermite differential equation is there. The solution is known as Hermite polynomial. 
and that is an example of special function similarly Lagrange differential equation will give me Lagrange functions will be there or polynomials will be there there they will be the solution to that differential equation so which means that uh, it is quite easy to understand what are special functions special functions are solutions to the special differential equations so in that simple language the entire thing can be uh, understood and uh, having said that i would like to explain some some basics of how to classify differential equations so for that let us move on to the board and i will <clears throat> to start with let us uh, let us first of all consider a simple algebraic equation okay this is not differential a simple algebraic equation that looks like y equal to e to the power of minus t so this equation is chosen in order to understand certain uh, basic concepts uh, which can be used in the case of the differential equation also so you have some variable called y here and then there is a t here so the point to be noted is that once an equation is written like this you must be in a position to identify which one is the independent variable and which one is the dependent variable this is very important so in this particular expression uh, time is the independent variable and we say that y will be a dependent variable now in terms of physics or in terms of physical understanding uh, how do you how do you understand which is independent variable means the the variable that you are going to control in the laboratory is known as independent variable now what do you mean by dependent variable is in physics it is called measuring measuring quantity what are you going to measure in an experiment you are going to measure something right you may be measuring the electrical resistivity so that means the quantity that you are going to measure is what we call dependent variable and the quantity which is used as a control variable is what is known as independent variable independent means we are not measuring that is the meaning and in this particular case we are uh, now showing a graph and uh, uh, from this graph you can easily see that on the x axis you uh, you have to put only the independent variable so this is the point that i am trying to make the connection independent variable means you plot it on the x axis and dependent variable means you you have to plot it on the y axis what is the purpose of uh, learning these two terminologies that we would like to know whether this particular equation is a linear equation or not i have y equal to e to the power of minus t and this is how the graph looks like e to the power minus t is looking like this and as you can see that this is not a straight line so something like this is there so i would like to know whether the equation is a linear equation or a nonlinear equation so what is the general uh, what is the general method so the idea is like this in order to make a decision on the on the on the linearity and nonlinearity we will have to worry about the power of the dependent variable so here i am writing how do you make a decision what decision you want to make whether the given equation given equation mean this one y equal to e to the power minus t whether the given equation is a linear equation in y or non linear equation in y y means what dependent variable so the answer is that the answer will depend on what is the power of the that particular variable so power means y to the power so y to the power how much is there so that's what we are going to make a decision and if it is exactly equal to 1 then it is linear equation if it is not equal to 1 means non linear equation so the terminology should be clear or the the not equal to 1 is very important okay don't think that it should be greater than 1 or it should be 2 like that it is not correct one option is exactly equal to 1 the other option is not equal to 1 less than 1 is also non linear only greater than 1 also non linear anything not equal to 1 is non linear but that's fine but there is an there is an important point that what is that power is power should be considered only for the dependent variable that's very important independent variable you will not at all worry about that is why the word is independent independent means it will stay independent so you you it doesn't enter into picture in classifying linear non linear homogeneous inhomogeneous etc okay so the in the classification it doesn't enter into picture it will stay independent that is why it is an independent variable so therefore you you have to first identify where is the dependent variable and for that dependent variable how much is the power in this in this equation uh, our power is y to the power 1 here so therefore based on this idea now we will be able to uh, classify right now we will classify that this equation is actually a linear differential equation
sorry, linear algebraic equation. So this is an algebraic one. So let me therefore finish writing this y to the power 1 will be a linear algebraic equation. So once you understand this kind of uh, classifying or this kind of uh, understanding the linear and nonlinear, the same idea is going to be useful for differential equation also. If these three things are there with you, then it is possible to write down a formal mathematical definition for a differential equation. A combination of these three things, this means what these three things, any kind of combination is what is known as differential equation. Combination means whether you want to multiply, add, whatever you want you can do, that is combination. So f means a function of, and function of is what is known as combination of, both are same. So you are going to you are going to consider some kind of combination, which means what do you mean by combination? I can add, I can subtract, whatever you want you can do, or you can multiply, divide. You have to follow this cursor. So f of x comma y comma y prime is there. That means x means independent variable, y means dependent variable, y prime means derivative of the dependent variable. f of means function of, that means combination of. What combination? Then you say that any combination. So that any combination is what I am writing here. Some kind of combination. So I have an independent variable, I have a dependent variable, I have derivative of the dependent variable. What is the combination that we are going to choose means I am choosing all the plus combination. This is simplest one. You can choose plus, minus, multiplication and division or any kind of mixture also you can choose. Everything is known as a combination. So instead of considering plus is the operator, I have considered multiplication is the operator so that now this is, this is one way to combine these three objects. And any kind of combination is a differential equation. Therefore, this is also a differential equation. So therefore, let us write down uh, a few more combinations like that. You should have an independent variable. Here it is there, independent variable. Then I must have a dependent variable. It is there. Then I need a derivative of the dependent variable. That's all about it. Whether you are going to logarithm and the sign is only, you know, changing the magnitude of, of that quantity. That's all about it. So any kind of mathematical combination is accepted. That is called combination. Any kind of mathematical combination is accepted. And once you write like this, every one of them is known as differential equation. So that point should be clear. How many ways you can combine the independent variable, dependent variable and derivatives of dependent variable? The answer is you can make infinitely many combination of them. That means you can generate infinitely many differential equations out of that. Therefore, we are going to focus our attention to one special type of or one variety of differential equations what are known as linear differential equations so the question comes that uh, out of the infinitely many combinations i want to choose only linear differential equation i want to choose only that non-linear i want to avoid it so if it is the case then how how you are going to do it and how are you going to identify them that's what i am trying to explain if you are going to choose only linear combinations then the differential equation is known as linear differential equation. X means independent variable. Independent variable means known quantity. Unknown quantity is y. If, if the unknown quantity is y, then y prime, y itself I don't know. Then what about y prime? y prime also I do not know. So therefore, unknown quantity is y and y prime will be unknown quantities. Known quantity is x. The power of the unknown is what you have to tell. So now what is the power of the unknown 1, y to the power 1 and what is the power of the unknown 1? So which means that the power of the unknown is exactly 1 in this equation. And because of that, uh, because of that reason, we can now say that this is a linear differential equation. The classification is clear, right? And similarly, uh, I will write down which one is linear as you can easily verify. Okay, so here you can find out why it is linear. Uh, this is unknown quantity to the power 1, unknown quantity to the power 1. This is a known quantity. So e to the power minus x is actually a nonlinear one because of the, uh, you know that it's e to the power x means uh, nonlinear, but remember that x is an independent variable. Independent variable means you do you should not worry about it. That's the meaning. So forget about the uh, the, the nature of the function that you have. 
and you have to worry about only unknown quantities so for the unknown quantities power is 1 therefore linear and come here in this equation what happens is this is a product now when you are having a product what happens is what will happen to the power these there are this is to the power 1 this is to the power 1 so uh, unknown to the power 1 multiplied by another unknown to the power 1 so what is the total power total power is 1 plus 1 isn't it so the, the point is that you don't have to worry whether it is y or y prime ultimately it is unknown unknown to the power 1 into another unknown to the power 1 so total power is greater than 1 therefore it is non-linear but there is a multiplication with x also but we don't we don't consider it because x is an independent variable independent variable whatever be the case x to the power 10 no problem x to the power 71 no problem so because independent variable means don't have to worry uh, you don't have to bring into picture in our classification so in in if it is the case uh, then what will happen to these two equation you can now write down what will happen to here the first term you see here this is linear because there is only one power here the second term unknown to the power one unknown to the power one so this is greater than one and coming here this is unknown to the power one and that's all so this is linear so first term is linear second term is non-linear third term is linear so three terms are there in the three term only one term is non-linear so what what should i write here so the answer is the final final answer is that it is non-linear so even one term goes uh, non-linear then the entire equation is classified as non-linear okay it is like this so you can easily understand that e even if one term even if only one single term goes non-linear the remaining terms are linear even then the entire equation is non-linear so similarly here also you can you can understand logarithm is non-linear only but this is a known quantity so no need to worry now y is a unknown quantity sine is a non-linear function now how do you know it's non-linear function means you already know that sine means going up and down oscillating right linear means a straight line you can also understand like that linear means a straight line behavior sine is not a straight line cosine is not a straight line they are oscillating now since it is oscillating they are non-linear so non-linear or for the what for the unknown so since it is unknown is there this quantity is a non-linear term similarly this is also unknown quantity and unknown quantity is oscillating therefore once again non-linear so two non-linear terms are there and one linear term is there we don't worry about this because this is a known quantity right when it is known quantity you simply say linear you don't have to worry about it so only these two terms are there and therefore uh, both of them are non-linear so we classify it as nl nl means non-linear so the idea is therefore clear uh, what did you learn till now is that we understood that starting from the independent variable dependent variable derivatives of the dependent variable you can write down infinitely many differential equations by this kind of combinations this is the first point second point is out of the infinitely many differential equations we will choose only linear differential equations that's what you written you see here if you are going to choose only the linear combinations then the differential equation is going to be linear differential equation